Hello students of dynamics, this is Dr. Dan Baker and in this example we're also going to use linear impulse momentum. It's just now that we have two particles instead of only one. Okay, so I'm actually going to work this problem a couple of different ways, at least portion of it, to show you how we can treat a multiple particle as a system, multiple particle system as a system, or we can break it into individual bodies. Okay, so that's our general approach to this. Now, to be honest, if this problem did not ask to find the tension in the cable, I wouldn't break it into two, into two bodies at all. Okay, because your tension basically is that tying factor um, between the two bodies. The friction coefficient alone can actually be solved as a system. But like I said, we'll go through it both ways. We'll start working through it as two particles. Okay, so two particles, we need to create free body diagrams, both for A, also for B. And the forces are fairly straightforward. We have a weight force, 10 pounds, pulling down on A. We also have then a normal force, call this NA. And there is a friction force. It says it's a rough surface. We don't know the friction coefficient yet. We need to solve for that. So call that the friction on A, FA. And then there's a tension force. Um, on B, is even simpler forces. We have the same equal tension force because of our frictionless pulley and massless cable. And then we have the eight pound force pulling straight down. Now to make both of these into kinetic diagrams, let's go ahead and add some motion. So the velocity of A will pull to the right and the velocity of B is gonna go down. Okay, so that's going to be our velocity. So that becomes a kinetic diagram and a free body diagram. Now, the one thing we're missing, which quite honestly is, is really one of the most important things of a problem like this, where fundamentally we have motion going on both in the X and also in the Y, is we need to create a unified coordinate system that any kind of motion for block A, let's say going to the right, is gonna to equate to um, motion for block B going down, and we need to call both of those positive, okay? So one way you can think about doing this is to essentially line up your coordinate system with your motion, okay, with your velocities. And so what I'm saying here is that I'm gonna use an axis system here, which I'm gonna call positive, and then as this one drops here, I'm also gonna call that positive, because fundamentally we want our momentum of both blocks to be both positive when they're both moving in the same direction. And of course, if they're moving in opposite directions, we want it to show up as negative. Okay, so just a, a nuance, but something that's important to do when you have motion going on in multiple directions. Okay, so another thing to observe, just to shorten up my computations here a little bit, is on this body here, if I sum my forces in the y direction equal to zero, I'm gonna find that Na is equal to 10 pounds. Now we know that normal force is not always equal to the weight, but in this case, all the rest of the forces are horizontal. So I'm gonna quickly do that to save myself one additional equation. All right, so let's go ahead and start with block B. There's less unknowns on it. It's a little more straightforward. Okay, so block B, and we're gonna write our impulse momentum. Okay, so we're gonna use the linear impulse momentum for each block. So let's move this label down here. All right, so we have the mass times V1 in the Y direction, plus our impulse, which is our integral of the sum of forces dt, and this is going to equal the final momentum mv2 sub y. Now, it did, problem did state that we started at rest, therefore we have no initial velocity. That trim, trims things down a little bit. And then we have these two different forces, one pulling up on block B, one pulling down. Now, from statics, I think a lot of our first impulse in looking at this problem is, well, if you have eight pounds pulling down and you have a tension pulling up, that tension must be eight pounds. And that's great for statics. It's not true for dynamics. If we didn't have a force differential between the top and the bottom, we wouldn't have a changing velocity, right? This system would actually just stay at rest, it would just sit there. 
but we're actually going to have a changing velocity from zero to some kind of a final velocity. And because of that, and we actually know what the final velocity is, one foot per second after five seconds. So fairly slow takeoff. We need to have a force differential of having more force pulling down than pulling back up in order to create that force differential in order to cause the motion. Okay. So we have zero from our momentum term. And then here's where those signs come in. Okay, so we're going to call positive going down. We have an eight pound force. And this is going to happen over five seconds, right? Remember, this is an impulse term, not just a sum of forces. And then the opposite direction, we have the tension again times five seconds. And then we know its mass is equal to its weight, which is eight pounds divided by 32.2. And then we also know our final velocity is one. Okay, so we have one unknown in this equation. It happens to be the tension. We can find that tension is equal to 7.95 pounds. So not a lot less than the eight pounds pulling down, but a bit. And then for block A, we can perform a similar computation. And we're gonna do the impulse momentum, this time in the horizontal direction. Okay, so we're going to go with mass V1 in the x direction plus my impulse, sum of my forces in the x dt is equal to my final momentum mv2 sub x. Here again we started at rest, so we get a zero to start with. And here we need to add in both the tension and also the friction, right? My two impulsive forces. Noticing that the 10 pounds and the normal force, they're perpendicular to all the motion, okay? So that's why we're able to include those sum of forces in the y equals zero. No acceleration in the y direction, also no change in momentum in the y direction. So non-impulsive in the x. So just our friction and tension force. Using our axis system positive to the right, we have our tension positive 7.95, applying that over five seconds. We then subtract off our friction force, which is our unknown mu sub k, times the normal force, which is 10 pounds, again times five seconds to create an impulse term. And this is equal to our mass, 10 divided by 32.2 times our final velocity of one. And we can solve that our friction coefficient mu sub k as our only unknown is equal to 0 0.789. Okay, so there are the two values for my tension and my friction coefficient. Okay, so if you're wondering what this looks like if we did this with a single system approach. Okay, so this is going to be the full system approach. And so basically what I'm do what I'm going to do is I'm not going to separate it into two separate bodies. I'm going to create a free body diagram of the overall system. Now this is going to look a little different. So here's my block A. Here is my block B. I now need to leave this cable which connected the two of them. I'm not cutting that. I am going to cut away the surface that A is sitting on. In doing so, I still have a normal force at A. I still have a friction force at A. I still have a body weight of A, that was at 10 pounds. I still have the weight of B, that was eight pounds. I additionally have a force that's coming in perpendicular to this cable. I'm going to call this, um, I don't know, let's call it P. So you can think that that's like the support force of the cable, which is perpendicular to the cable coming through that pulley. It's basically what's causing that cable to change direction. Noting here again that I'm going to establish an axis system, which is going to call for block A, anything going in this direction as positive. And really, if you wanted to, you could think it's following all the way down this cable down in here. I'm still calling this positive. So my non-impulsive forces, those that don't change my momentum, I'm going to highlight in yellow, 
one of those is going to be the support force here, P. Okay, all that force is doing is causing a change in the direction of the cable. It's not actually increasing or decreasing our momentum. The other one that's still non-impulsive is the normal force in addition to this 10 pound weight force. Okay, so what's kind of cool is we ended up with two impulsive forces instead of four, but you'll notice in the earlier equation that two of those impulsive forces were the same tension, right? Positive in one of the, in the positive for one body and negative for the other. So then creating a system impulse momentum equation, we could say that the sum of all of our M1 V1s plus the sum for each body of our impulses, summing forces, dt, is equal to the sum of all of our m2 v2s, okay? So we still start out at rest, so we can have this first term go to zero. And then for impulse, we only need to include those two impulsive forces, the friction force and the weight force. Now, the Weight force is going to be positive, so that's going to be 8 times my 5 seconds. The friction force is still going to be negative, okay, negative impulse, opposing motion. We have that unknown mu sub k, known value of normal force is 10 pounds, known interval of time for 5 seconds, and then over to the right side of our equation, the sum of our final momentum. I'm going to separate these into two separate momentum terms, one for each block. So we have 10 pounds divided by 32.2 to get our mass of A. We know its final velocity is one foot per second. And then we add on the final momentum of B, eight pounds divided by 32.2, also times one foot per second. Now, I could have lumped together the masses because the velocities are exactly the same for both blocks. I left it separate here just to highlight if you had different velocities. Say you had a pulley system and one block is moving at a different velocity than the other, you could leave them separate and you have your independent momentums for each of those blocks. And so in this equation, it turns out we have one single unknown because we don't have tension showing up anywhere in here. And we could find out that mu sub k is equal to the same value, 0 0.789. Okay, so two different approaches, a system approach and an individual particle approach to solve the same problem. Now, if you chose the system approach and then needed to solve for the tension, you could have set up um, a single free body diagram, kinetic diagram of just one of the bodies and essentially solved it out that way, just very similar to what we did in the first part. I just noticed one last thing here is I didn't add my kinetic terms. Let me just add those that our velocity for A is going to the right and our velocity here of B is going downward. Just to make them combined free body diagrams and kinetic diagrams. Thank you for your attention today. I hope you're having a good one.